wrong speech. <laughs> Not that it wasn't good. You can read my speech. <laughs> I'd be happy to. <laughs> and a shortest speech on record. <laughs> well, I am indeed Richard Walser, and it's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. As a county commissioner candidate, I think it's important to mention, however briefly, what it is commissioners do before I visit with you about my qualifications to do it. Nearly everything commissioners do falls under the heading of oversight of county government. Commissioners decide how to budget the tax dollars collected, as well as oversee the departments that spend it. They have the final say regarding land use, and they also hear appeals and petitions on a variety of issues. With these brief points in mind, I feel I have qualifications that would be helpful in fulfilling the duties of county commissioners. I've lived in Laidlaw County my entire life. I operated our family farm for over 30 years, and during that time I was elected by my peers to the Board of Directors of two grain cooperatives for a total of 12 years. I was also elected to serve a total of 12 years on the three-person county committee for the Farm Service Agency, which administers the farm program at the county level. Managing our farm taught me principles of accounting, budgeting, and financial planning, things that would be useful for a commissioner to know. It was on the farm I recognized the necessity of prioritizing wants versus needs. Needs have to be met, wants may have to wait. So too with the county budget. And it was my years serving as, on the committees and boards that I became aware of the crucial importance that teamwork plays in successful oversight. Respecting your fellow commissioners is essential. I'd be the first to admit I have a lot to learn if I'm elected county commissioner, but I think my past experience in oversight of government and business be a great help in fulfilling some of the duties of the commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, uh, New St. Andrews. Students, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Steve Cook. I'm a candidate for county commissioner. I ask for your vote, your support, and your money. <laughs> Let's get right down to specifics. If you give me money, I will send you a thank you note. And in that thank you note, I will say, I will use your money to promote progressive ideas and policies for the residents of Laytock County. I've written a number of these notes this, this fall. My progressive issues are rural broadband internet, seamless emergency medical response, and easy to understand county budgets. But what makes these policies progressive exactly? What are the underlying moral assumptions and values of progressives? What are the first principles? Here is a, my one progressive moral syllogism. Here's the major premise. The moral foundation of democratic capitalism is that people should care for each other. We see that from Jesus of Nazareth and Adam Smith. The minor premise, citizens should work together for their mutual protection and empowerment. And you see that in Max Weber's Protestant Ethics and the Spirit of Capitalism, and in my own Cooperation Really Works logo. What's the conclusion? Democratic governments and capitalist societies should carry out moral missions because they are the instruments through which citizens work together for their mutual protection and empowerment. So back to my principle. Rural broadband internet should be provided because government has a moral mission to empower everyone, not just urban people. Seamless emergency medical response, governments have a moral mission to protect everyone, not just people in cities. Easy to understand county budgets is because governments, as an instrument of moral missions, has a moral obligation to be good. That is, to provide public provision of services that are transparent, accountable, efficient, Thank you. At this point, I'd like to invite Mr. Daniel Pilney onto the stage. You will have questions for both. Uh, good afternoon to Dr. Cook, oh, Dr. Mr. Walzer, and Dr. Cook. Um, it's an honor to have you guys join us today. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, Mr. Mr. Walzer, uh, there's been a proposal in the Idaho Senate to cut property taxes statewide. The proposed tax cuts would mean a loss of $250,000 annually, or 3.1% of 
of the county budget annually. Um, Jennifer Barrett, who is the uh, current county commissioner, said that such a loss in tax revenue would be, quote, disastrous for the county. Do you agree? And what do you think about the proposed tax cuts? I don't know if I would use the word disaster, but it's certainly a big deal. I mean, that's a big part of our, our, our county budget is over $15 million, and $250,000 would be a huge hit. Um, as far as dealing with it, uh, hopefully it won't happen. I, I think that it's, I don't have a love of personal property tax, but you don't just uh, cut something like that without having a plan B or backup plan. Um, uh, Ken DeVries mentioned earlier, uh, like user fees, uh, uh, charging people for what they do, taxing other sales taxes and other things. So if I don't have a love of, as I say, personal property tax would be something I'd be happy to see go away, but until you can place that $200,000 with some other plan, uh, that would be a, a, a huge hurdle for our county. I think that would be very, very tough to deal with without having a backup plan B. This kind of came out in your opening statements, but um, unlike your opponent, you, um, you don't have as well-defined a platform. Did you do that on purpose, from what I read, um, because you stress your ability to adapt to situations and work together with other council members? And uh, I was wanting to ask you, uh, what do you think the purpose and function of a county commissioner is, and how his role as a one member in a three-part board affects his job? Right. I, I think it's very important to realize that as a county commissioner, when you're joining a team, so to say that I, if you elect me, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, is just it's just wrong. You're joining two people, and I've worked on a three-person committee. You need to work with other the other two people. And so, as far as um, my own agenda, if you look at this, this state statute, which authorizes gives county commissioners their power, what they're supposed to do. It's not have some, there's nothing in there, I hope you all take it, as you need to do this as students, I'll get back in your homework here. Um, you, you do not, uh, the statute doesn't authorize you to have a grand division or some plan to qualify. It's oversight of county government. That's mostly what the commissioners do. And if you ever go to a commissioner's meetings, I have, it's not what I would call glamorous work. It's in the trenches, oversee <coughs> county government, there's nothing very exciting. I don't want to say the use the word mundane because it sounds like it's not important. It's very important what you should do. But it is um, important to, to realize, to recognize that sometimes politicians get a little carried away with their importance of what they, they plan on doing versus what they're actually supposed to do. Thank you very much. And that's all the time we have. Thank you, Seth. Um, uh, Dr. Cook, I'd like to start with the same question, actually, for you. Um, there's been a proposal to cut property taxes statewide, so late has been going to lose 250000 um, Do you agree with Jennifer Barrett that that would be disastrous, and what do you think about the proposed tax cuts? Um, thank you for the question. Very thoughtful. He told me I had to make him look good. It's my fault. The uh, personal property tax that the legislature is thinking of cutting is uh, rationed rationalized because uh, assessing personal property is burdensome to business, and I agree. What I don't agree is that uh, personal property is a smokescreen for the term operating uh, property, or uh, which is essentially the capital owned by public utilities. I don't agree that that needs to be taken off the property tax rolls, and that represents actually the largest piece of it. So there's a little bit of a shell game that's taking place that they're using small business inconvenience to give large utilities a huge tax break. I am fine with giving small business a tax break. I'm not fine with giving the utilities a huge tax break. How do you make up the revenue? A key question. The state government is excellent at collecting taxes because they can collect income tax and they can collect sales tax. The problem is they don't share. Now, anybody who's been to kindergarten knows rules is you should share. And state government needs to be willing to share their excellent tax collection ability back with local government. So if they want to decrease the base of local government, which property tax is, then they need to share the income and sales tax back with the county government. That's how I think they should resolve it. Thank you very much. And then uh, you've taken a much more proactive approach in establishing a definite uh, platform for your, uh, uh, for your race, for your campaign. 
uh, which suggests to me that at least that you have a sort of a different approach maybe to the Canadian Commission uh, position. Is that fair to say? And if this is fair, uh, what do you think the position, uh, what should the function and purpose be? Another excellent question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in this together. See, cooperation really does work. <laughs> if you look at Idaho Code, uh, Title 21, Chapter 7, it says that the, the perspective of uh, county government is to, let me see if I can read it, to provide for the safety, health, development, and morality of the residents of the county and to protect property. That is a very broad mandate. Local government, county government in particular, is the functional equivalent of a mini state legislature or a small geographic area. Some people have said uh, having a platform and making it inflexible dealing with other commissions and with other issues that arise. Sure. Uh, it's, it's only inflexible if I, if I take a position and say it has to be that way or the highway. I, I think that what uh, legislators need to do is to do their homework to find out what the issues are. I sat through a series of uh, county commissioners' meetings, particularly the budget hearings this summer, and, and talked with the commissioners afterwards to find out what the issues are. And I also talked with the B.J. Swanson, our economic development director for the county, and asked her, what are the issues facing the top county? And, and, and out of that came paramedic, providing paramedic services is a problem because there's a revolving door issue. They're well, paid, they're well trained, but they're not well paid, and so they're worried. And, and also, internet service is a problem because we want businesses to be in the outlying areas. And uh, uh, the two firms that provide First Step and, and uh, Frontier are in competition instead of cooperating. So businesses suffer because they can't quite get what they need is these jostling the position. So that's an issue. And just sitting through the budget hearings themselves. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Cook. I'm going to have to be reformatted. I'm going to have to start here. Thank Sorry. you. Um, if you wish to carry on, you do have two minutes to uh, I do. Uh, can I, can make any closing remarks and any clarifications. And then... What? Shall I start? Yes, yeah, please go ahead. Let's assume for the <laughs> No laughing is using my time. <laughs> Let's assume for a moment that I'm not a progressive, but a conservative. So I would write my letter to you. I will use your money to promote conservative or libertarian ideas and policies for the residents of Lay Talk County. And my conservative issues are rural broadband internet, seamless emergency medical response, and easy to understand county budgets. What make these policies conservative or libertarian exactly? What are the underlying moral assumptions associated with libertarian and conservative ideals? Well, the first principles, as I understand it, for conservatives and libertarians and moral syllogism would be a major premise. The moral foundation of democratic capitalism is that man is heroic. And I think Mr. Gervais, one of uh, my previous uh, colleagues, said that they should be protected from each other. This is a philosophy, it seems to me, right out of Anne Rand and Fountainhead, objectivism. Then a minor premise would be the proper uh, moral purpose of one's life, then, is to pursue one's own happiness with productive achievement as its noblest objective and reason as its only absolute. Again, Anne Rand, or W.F. Uh, William Buckley, God and Man of Yale. And the conclusion from those two premises would be only, the only social system consistent with the morality, with this morality, is full respect for the individual rights and laissez-faire capitalism. And you can see that in Mourning for America, Contract on America, for America, and Believe in America. So then, referring back to the uh, issues, broadband internet, cut red tape. Seamless emergency medical response, promote free market and fair uh, competition. And easy to understand county budgets, let's have smaller, simpler, smarter government. Thank you. Thanks again for having us today. This has been very enjoyable. Over the years, I voted for many county commissioners. Looking back, I realized I always voted for someone who, in my opinion, had good judgment. Someone you could count on to do the right thing. A listener willing to take the time to gather all the facts. So how does one tell who has good judgment? I think it can be identified by the way we've lived and the choices we've made. Our experience is important. I think my experience, as mentioned earlier, plus the lessons I've been taught by others, have helped me along the road to good judgment. Lessons learned from my parents, 
teachers, coaches, and pastors. Things like always keeping your word, never looking down on anybody, never asking an employee to do something you wouldn't do yourself, and when you're wrong, admitting it. It's not just what we've done, but how we've done it. If you as voters feel what I've said here this afternoon would indicate good judgment on my part, then I would ask for your vote on November 6th. Thank you again. Thank you for joining me.